All right, so let's use Newton's method to evaluate or approximate the value of a point on a third degree polynomial function. Now, before we get started, if you have not yet watched my video on Newton's method, um, or if you just don't feel comfortable with Newton's method, I have a video explaining the mathematical and graphical basis of Newton's method, exactly how it works, why it works, and why it's useful, and what it's useful for. That's also on my channel. So uh, if you don't understand some of the steps here, that might be a pretty good idea to go ahead and watch that. So let's get started. We know that the equation we use to determine or to evaluate or to approximate values with Newton's method is given by xi plus 1 equals xi minus f of xi over f prime of xi. All right. So this is the equation we're going to use. And we're going to use this to evaluate the function f of x equals x cubed minus 5 using, let me change colors here, x1 equals 2. All right, so we'll be flipping back to this page for uh, a reference point a few times. All right, so let's get started. We have this equation here, this one, and we know that xi plus 1 is just simply saying the first x that we're given plus 1, so this is going to be x2 equals yada, yada, yada uh, for our x2 because our x2 is the first thing we're going to find for this, uh, for this problem since we are already provided with our x1. So let's get started, go to a new page. First thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and just rewrite our equation with the appropriate things filled in. So x2, uh, let's make it down a little bit farther, x2 equals x1, or xi, minus xi cubed minus 5 over... Three x i squared. Now, why am I writing x i instead of just writing the values? We know that x i in this case, because we're evaluating x two, x i for this uh, this part of the this step of the process is just going to be two because our x one was two. So that should make sense. So why am I writing x i? Why am I not just writing Two. Well, I'm doing that as kind of a placeholder. I don't want to go ahead and put in any values because it might mess us up later down the road as we're continuing to evaluate this function. So let's change colors again and this time rewrite this and put in where we have our xi. Understand that that's going to be our x1 and just write the number 2 there. So let's do that. x2 equals xi 2 minus right here, 2 cubed minus 5 over 3 xi 2 squared, 3 times 2 squared. All right, so now let's just start evaluating this. x2 equals 2 minus... 1 over 4 because 2 squared, 2 cubed is 9 minus 5 and uh, uh, 3 times 2 is 6 squared. So we have all that. Uh, so this is going to be 2 minus a quarter. So we know that our x2 is 2 minus a quarter or x2 equals 1 and 3 quarters or, you know what, this is also kind of ugly, so how about we say x2 equals 7 fourths. That sounds good to me. Let's say x2 equals 7 fourths. Okay. So we have our x1 and our x2. Let's go ahead and rewrite them up here in the upper right-hand corner. Our x1, we said, equals 2. And our x2, we said, equals 7 fourths. So we have that for our reference here. Now... 
We're going to discontinue on to evaluate up to x3. We're not going to go any farther than x3 for this problem, so once we get x3, we will convert to a decimal and have our answer. So x3 equals 7 fourths minus 7 fourths cubed minus 5. over, let's extend this, hang on, let me rewrite this, I've done a terrible job here, all right, 7 fourths minus 7 fourths cubed minus 5 over 3 times 7 fourths squared, and this is going to give us that x3 equals 7 fourths minus 23 5 eighty-eighths. That's pretty ugly, eh? So 7 fourths minus 23 5 eighty-eighths. This is just equal to see and and of course I'm not doing any of this in my head this is I've had this pre-calculated so um, I'm assuming that you're doing this with just a basic scientific calculator we don't need to go through all the ridiculous arithmetic here that would just take too much time so 7 fourths minus 23 over 588 is just going to equal 500 and well this is going to be an ugly color for us to use let's do one that'll show up better say 503 over 294 which we need a decimal approximation here. So x3 approximated as a decimal is roughly equal to a one point. Let me get that point seven one zero eight eight four three five four dot 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 and it's gonna continue to go on for a while. So this is our answer. Let's highlight that. This is our that's a terrible highlight. Let's see. Uh, make it bigger and less opaque. Okay, how about this? This is our final answer. All right, so not very difficult to get there. We uh, just plugged everything into the original equation, xi plus 1 equals xi minus f of xi over f prime of xi. Once again, watch the video detailing the concepts if you need some uh, extra help getting the background for this. We plugged everything into that equation. We got our x2 from our x1, and then we used our x2 to arrive at our x3, and then we converted our x3 into a decimal, and there you go. x3 is 1.710, da 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 da, da. All righty.